All right, so we are going to use our three primary colors today. And that is our red. And I happen to, my red, like true red, it's, you know, there's no such thing as true red, true blue, and true yellow in real life. They will always be skewed a little bit to the warm side, like for, for reds to, towards the orangey side or towards the pinky side. And the same with the blues and the yellows. I mean, the blues will be either a warmer blue or it'll be a cooler blue. But for, for all intents and purposes on my palette, I, use, I like to use the quinacridone red as my true red. And then I happen to like to use my transparent yellow, which looks very, very ugly in the palette because it is truly a transparent yellow. And you know, um, wow. when it's transparent, that means that when it's dried up, all the pigments, you know, it's very, very loaded with pigments. And it's the same as if you were put um, a stained glass on, on a surface and, and um, there's no light that shines through it. Mm -hmm. It will not look, you can't really see it just look dark. Right. And so it's called Transparent Yellow in this particular brand, which is Winter Newton. Nickel Aso Yellow in a, several other brands. Nickel, what is Nickel Aso Yellow. Nickel Aso. Okay, yeah. I have something like that. And uh, Daniel Smith also has a Nickel Aso Yellow. Okay, okay. And then I'm going to go with my standard blue. So my I'm using my colors that I tell my beginner students if just, you know, most of us, you know, we don't have unlimited funds. And so just to get started, just get the primary colors. And that is French ultramarine blues. So it's a warm blue. It is, it's a warm blue, but it's a gorgeous blue. And that's a very, it's a very traditional color. It's, you know, French, French ultramarine blue or ultramarine blue. Uh, so let's get some of my, so I'm putting them in, in different mixing areas because I want to keep them clean right now and then I'm going to let them mix on the paper. I do a lot of my colors this way. So you can see I spray water on them, my colors, and then I go in with a brush, usually not a too, too big brush, um, and get the pigment out and then I mush it around. I like to call this mushing. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I don't have any undissolved pigment particles because once I start painting, then I'll get a fat old stripe across my paper and it's mm -hmm. always going to be in a very inconvenient place. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and so also you can see my, my dirty water. So you can see I rinsed out my blue, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to rinse out my red. And the dirty water tells a story, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It is telling me that the blue and the red that I have here, they get along just brilliantly and make the most lovely lavender purple color. And that is because red and blue, they will make purple. And it just so happens that my red, if anything, it probably is leaning a little bit to the cool side, meaning it's a little on the pinky side. And my blue is leaning towards the warm side, meaning that it's a little bit on the purpley side. So both of them are already going towards each other. Mm -hmm. So they're going to make a very brilliant, beautiful purple. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'd had a red that was a little bit more on the orangey red side, mm -hmm. it would have made a duller purple, yes. a more muted purple. Yeah. That's color theory for you there. And that's something you learn over time, but it's very, very important uh, to know your colors because that can, you know, explain a lot of things why things are happening on your palette if you understand the color theory. And then we're gonna go see different story once we get some water in that transparent yellow. It's already looking a lot better. There we have it. Now I put the yellow in. So now we have all three primary colors here and we got a neutral. A brown right mm -hmm. because that's what happens uh, the the three primary colors when you mix all three together they're gonna neutralize each other okay so here I have more red and more yellow in so it's actually it's not a bad color you know it's just if I didn't want it, it I would be not so happy this is more like a burnt chenna yeah, which mm -hmm. is a color I have on my palette this one it's a convenience color because as you can see, mm -hmm. I can mix it. I love that color. Yeah. I can mix it. So that's why I, 
I call that a convenience color because I colors that are convenience colors on my palette, it does it means that I could mix them, but it takes a little bit of a longer time, especially when you're mixing three colors together to get a particular color. It's a lot of back and forth, you know, so you can spend 15 minutes, you know, trying to get exactly the shade you were looking for. So some for some colors, it's kind of nice to just have them out of the tube. Yeah. Yeah, because then how do you reproduce it if you want yeah. more? Well, that's, yeah, yeah, and so that's oh, another thing. You you want to make sure you get enough yeah. out on your palette yeah. to from the get-go so you, you don't have that dilemma that all of a sudden is like, oops. I have something called a Sennelier yellow. I was just looking to see what okay. the name was. It's very similar on the paper, but <clears throat> right. it doesn't look anything like that. Right. It's more like an orange. When it's okay, 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 yeah. They're so, I mean, there's a hundreds of colors mm -hmm. out of the tube from different companies yeah. uh, and and there's a unlimited number of colors when you think about what you can mix because I mean there's so many shades of every single color anyway but we're just going to go with the basics here red blue and yellow and then we are going to wet the whole paper mm. and I might even wet mine now mine's not going to buckle too much because I am painting on the 300, but I like to use my spray bottle and then wet the back side of your paper first. Okay. Uh, and you can't do that, but you don't have to because yours is glued down, remember? So yeah. yours is not going to buckle. I do remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so can you see how it's kind of curving up now? Yeah. And I have the 300 weight, so I probably won't need to. No, you don't have to. Um, it's going to buckle a little bit because you can see even mine's buckling a little bit now. It's buckling up this way, right? That's because now the paper particles on the back there, they're getting moist, meaning they're expanding. Yeah. And so these little skinny ones here, they're still skinny. So do I spray the front? Yes. So now we're going to wet the front. So I'm going to just, I could do it with my spray bottle, but I want to have water on the whole piece. And I'm going to take my time, put the water on. And I'm going to take a bath in it. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure it has time to sink in. Can you see how my paper is just kind of relaxing mm -hmm. now? No, sort of flattening out. That's the 300, right? That's the 300, mm -hmm. but the 140 will do the exact same thing. And so I'm taking my time with applying the water. The water is such an important part of watercolor and how your paints are going to behave. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of look at it from the side and see if it's really nice and shiny. Yes, I think I didn't miss any spots. And then I'm gonna give it a little time to sink in and then I'm gonna give it another little go over. Hmm. Is that what prevents the buckling? It is what prevents the buckling is that it's wet on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will even kind of cling to your board. Right. So you could actually, now you can take it up and it's not gonna fall off. Um, and of course, I could also have taped it down, but I'm not a big fan of that most of the time. I just like it better this way. And so I think we're good. And so now we're gonna put color on. You used to say that the shine had to go to a certain level before you start to put color on. Yeah, it depends. Now I want it very, very wet. Oh, okay. So I want it very, good. very wet. Sure. And that's why I took my time and put color, uh, put water on several times and I want it very shiny. Okay. The shinier it is, the wetter it is. And I can actually see out here, I can see that it's already beginning to lose the shine right on this edge here. So I might actually do it one more time. Now you have to remember we are living in a very, yeah. very oh, dry yeah. climate, and we are in a very, very, very dry period. I mean, at my, luckily we didn't lose power at my house, but we were threatened with, you know, how pt and &E is shutting off mm. power California. up and down California. Really? And Truckee yeah. was on the list of possibilities. Really? Wow. Yes. You get, you get the electricity from pg &E? No, we do no. not. Luckily, we get it from no. Liberty yeah, Utilities. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what we no. do too. Yeah. Okay. So we, they, they were threatening? Oh, I didn't hear that. Okay. So anyway, uh, so that's why we, like, I lived out on the coast when I first started painting. Oh, my gosh, you could take tea breaks and <laughs> while you waited for your things to dry. <laughs> <laughs> Here you would. In Mendocino, it probably took forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Here we have to be fast painters in our climate. So I'm gonna be fast. I'm gonna take some of my yellow on my brush and I'm gonna put some yellow here, like that. Now I'm not gonna put it completely in the middle. I'm gonna put it off middle off center a little bit up. That's for composition and design. You never want to put anything like smack dab in the middle of your painting. It, it's harder to make a good painting that way. All right, so I'm going to go with a bigger brush. Now I'm going to take my red and I'm going to put the red around hmm. and it can touch. And I'm going to put quite a lot of red on. So kind of like a bullseye. There we have it. Rinse that out. And then I'm going to take my blue. And I'm going to put blue on the rest of my paper. I should have mixed myself some more blue. And so here and can go into the red. And here. And I think I'm pretty good. I kind of want some, a little bit stronger blue here. So you can see I didn't mix myself enough blue because I had to go in and mix, so but that was okay. All right, enough already. And now I don't want it to dry like that. So now I'm gonna tip my board and I'm gonna take my mister bottle and I'm gonna move my hand and mist to make the colors run. The more water I have on, whoops, uh, the more my colors are going to float. So there. I want them to flow this way. Mm. And I can, I'm going to use gravity for a change. Gravity is going to be my friend. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it a friend. <laughs> no. well, in this not normally. Is... Only in this case. Yeah. Only yeah. in this case. Otherwise, we're not so good friends. Is it the friend of my enemy is my friend, or the enemy of my friend is my friend? Yeah. <laughs> so, and then you can, can you see I'm getting some neutrals there? Yes. Yeah. Because that's where the yellow, the blue, and the red, they all ran together, but I'm okay with that. I just don't want neutrals everywhere. That's why I gave it a big ring of red around. And then I'm gonna let it run out a little, like, out like that a little bit, like up. And then I'm gonna let it run down. On my pad, the the uh, colors won't, or well, the water won't seep through to? No, it won't. You don't have to worry about that. And can you see how I'm taking a piece of tissue and yeah. I'm just kind of running all this dirty water off? Yep. Mm -hmm on the corner because I don't want that to run back into my painting. So this is a very, very intuitive, yeah. fun way of painting. And all I'm painting here is I'm just painting a background that we're gonna use for our sunset scene, right? So I can just spray a little bit more if I feel like it. And see how that's traveling down? Mm -hmm. I love it. I want a little bit more light here in here. So then I can just put some more water inside mm -hmm. and run it off. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. So we're painting just by, you know, using water and gravity. And we used a little bit of our color theory to avoid mud by putting red in as a buffer between our blue and our yellow because I didn't really mm. want green because <laughs> yellow and blue is green. <laughs> a moldy sunset. In the valley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I just wanted a little bit more of a color transition out here. So I just sprayed some of that red to go out here. Uh -huh. That's neat. And then, not, it doesn't look quite as muddy then. Too. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I don't mind a little bit of a gray tone there, but don't want too much. So just run this this way and then we're good to go. I just wanna just tone this blue down just a little bit. You really don't want any of the colors running through the yellow. No, exactly. 
and you know they are going to travel in a little bit but then i went in and then i sprayed uh -huh. yeah. so that's it so that's going to be my background yeah. and i'm just going to take dab that up a little bit so now i'm going to invite you to go down and do the same thing so I'm going to take some of my French ultramarine blue and I'm going to make myself a pretty nice big puddle in here. And so what I'm going for now for this uh, landscape we're going to be painting here is that, how do I want it? I think I might want mine like this, this way. Anyway, um, we are now going to uh, paint some uh, mountain ranges that are like backlit. And so I'm gonna take some of my blue and I'm gonna take some of my red here. And I'm probably gonna take a little bit of the red out here. Stand by. <laughs> and I think I might need a little bit more just in case. Even though, I mean, I know already that I'm gonna be use, using mostly blue, which is my French ultramarine blue or some brands call them ultramarine blue. Uh, and um, then I'm going to have a little bit of the yellow, my transparent yellow, which is over here. I'm going to put that over here. There. Okay. And so now I have a little bit of the yellow on my brush. And you know, now I get orange, right? And uh, <laughs> orange and blue are complementary colors so we know so now i have a brown and the more blue i put in we're going to be moving over towards gray can you see that mm -hmm. yeah. and then even more and it's going to be kind of a bluish gray and that's the color i'm after hmm. there we have it okay. that's what i want and neutral cool because when we're painting a landscape um things that are far, far away, they're not, um, they're not going to be very brightly colored. They're very pale and cool in color. So when we're seeing mountain ranges far, far away, you know, there's one mountain range, then there's another mountain range, another mountain. And as you come closer, they become more defined. Mm -hmm. The colors become brighter and, um, and you get more detail. Um, so to say that something is far away, you need to keep it a very neutral, cool color. So that's like grays and purples and colors like that. We've all seen these photos with, you know, mountain ranges and they kind of almost disappear as the further away they get. Because we're looking through the atmosphere. Okay. Um, and so now we got our color. I'm gonna put maybe a little bit more water in. And then, Let's see, I need one more brush, I think. And then I am going to paint my that's with water. That's a brush. <laughs> yeah. I could also have used a flat, but um, so I I want to decide where I want this mountain range. So I want to see some of the sky. I would never do it in the middle never do half half right. that's the composition Birds. and design that's a that's bad a composition third, yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah so a third is better so let's just um go in here and I'm gonna try and get a little bit of a mountainous shape here and just with the water so can you see my line? Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to, and I have to hold it a little bit like this because other, when it's like this, I can't really see where the water yeah. is. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to, that's a typical watercolor thing. We always have to kind of go like this and hold our paper so we can see our water. So I want water a little bit further down than where I'm gonna be painting. I'm just gonna paint this top mountain shape. And now I'm just fixing my shapes here so that I have some shapes that I like. Not all, you know, the same. 
and let's see and once I get pigment on I can see better all right so I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of this very cool color on I'm gonna put a little bit more water in it dab 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 over here and then I'm gonna start up here and just dabbing some color in and we already know right that the color is going to flow wherever I have water so let's just get some color in and what I want is I want it to just oh, kind of disappear okay. as it runs down the page that's why I put that extra water in because I don't want I want a hard line here that says the top of the mountains I do not want any lines at the bottom because I'm going to put more in front and if I have a line going through that's going to be a pain and you know you can't see through mountains so this is the bottom of your painting no no or this is the, the bottom. bottom that's the top yeah. this is the bottom sure. of the mountains where I want the colors to just flow out so that I don't have a hard edge but I want a hard edge up here right because it's the mountains and as I go I can correct the shapes a little bit and so let's see here <clears throat> And a little bit more pigment in and now you can go in while it's still wet and you can kind of dab in a little bit of pigment here and there if you want to i'm going to rinse out my brush dab it and i'm going to hold it like this a little bit and i'm just going to make sure that this kind of flows down so there's the top of my mountains and i want to dab in a little bit more color a couple of places especially here on the shadow side and that shadow side will actually be on the opposite there because the light's coming from behind there. Can you see that? Uh -huh. There's my top of my mountains, Beautiful. the furthest away mountains. In a landscape, we also always paint from the furthest distance and then towards us. So Why did you start so high? Why wouldn't you? I could have because that's what I chose, but you could. I could also have chosen lower, but you know, I. Like you're missing. You're losing out on your yellow you put in there. Gonna, but I'm oh, all, you know, wait until you see when I'm no, done. I know, but I'm just yeah. saying, because I, I just was curious. Yeah, yeah. I was just looking at what this picture had in yeah. it. Yeah, but see, I'm and painting a just, different picture. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I want to have room for some water here. So if oh, I start okay. way too low down, I, I run out of space before okay. I've said everything I want to say with my landscape. Okay. And I'm going to have a couple of ranges of mountains. So and yeah. some of them might okay. not go all the way across. Some of them might just, okay. you know, I might have some coming in so we'll have to see i i never decide exactly what i want with landscapes like this because i wait to see what happens on my paper sure. uh, but you know you don't you start wherever it's a good place for you to start in your painting mm -hmm. but all the things i want to show you here mm -hmm. i need space that's mm -hmm. why i decided to not give myself so much sky because I have other plans for the bottom, okay. but you will see this. Yeah, I'm not going to cover it all up. Cause, yeah, because we had worked so hard to get that yellow in the center. Yeah, <laughs> and you can see now as it's drying, see the colors also shine through the mountains yes. a little bit, so that makes them very interesting and yes. kind of atmospheric. Yes. These mm -hmm. types of landscapes are often referred to as atmospheric landscapes because you know they're. It's more about atmosphere and the feeling. Um, that it is, you know, uh, minute details. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so why don't you go down to your paintings and do your first mountain range or whatever uh, so you, you want to do? Wet this part. I wet and it then you further down so that I don't get a hard line. I do not want a hard line here. Okay, only gotcha. here. Lion. Yep. And that's why I put water in. As things dry especially when we do so much water, you know, it dries paler than what it looks like when we put it on. Mm. And I'm pretty happy with this. This mm. works for me. <clears throat> so um, let's uh, put another little mountain range on. So I'm gonna use the same color. So I mixed myself a nice big puddle. And though this time I could put a little tiny bit more red in, just warm it up a little bit because warm also brings forward, cool pushes back, warm brings forward, and uh, pale pushes back, and bright brings forward. Keep that in mind. And we are, you know, we're in the trickery business, don't forget. We're trying to trick the viewer's eyes into believing that this flat piece of paper has depth and dimension. <laughs> so we have to be extra, extra trickery. So we have to kind of maybe exaggerate it. 
you know, to make that uh, come true. All right, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did before, only this time I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Why not? So I'm gonna now just put a little bit of clean water here across. Almost up to, so just like that, <coughs> sorry. And then I have my pigment here, and then let's see. So then I'll hit some dry, right? As I'm putting my mountains in. So it gets a little bit harder etched, and it still disappears, you know, at the bottom. That's important to me that it disappears at the bottom. And I wanna make sure that I don't do like a mirror image of what right. I have. <laughs> so I'm trying to make it. Uh, so that, that it's still interesting and not all the same, you know? Mm -hmm. And now I wanna go in and with a damp brush, just run across here and just make sure I get a soft edge, right? I got hard edges on all my first line. Are they ever gonna get covered up by the edges? Uh, it's hard to cover up hard edges. That's why I try to make them mm make them um, soft here. That's the whole point of yeah, that. It's like so it's kind of hard, but you know, and I like to leave these a little bit lighter because I, you know, because that's where the, the lightest light is on my wow. mountains. Uh -huh. mm. And I want to have that feeling that the, the bright light is almost obliterating, you know, the, mm. some of the edges mm -hmm. there. <coughs> so there yeah. Yeah. is the next okay. one. Okay. So I take my dagger brush and I go maybe here. I don't want to go just to the okay. middle. I want to go a little past the middle and I'm just putting a water line in right now. Can you see that? Uh -huh. So, and let's do a little bit more. Put, push up like this. Like that. And now I want to go in and I'm just going to dibbly dabbly. And I can't really see, but it doesn't matter. I want to have some warm and uh, uh, some wet and some dry areas here. That's what I want. Hmm. Can you see that? They're only yes. going up partly into the yellow, yeah. into the sun. On yeah, only partly. Background. I'm not doing the all the way because this is a little piece of land that's sticking in. Okay. Because part of this is water, you see. Okay, okay so I got some water on there. And um, let's just get some pigment in. And it will only follow the wet. And it only follows uh -huh. the wet, so I can be pretty relaxed about this. And you can see I'm just dab I'm just touching my brush down and then I'm picking it up. And then, you know, I see how fast <gasps> and whatnot it moves. So, so far so good, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm loading up my brush and I'm gonna just push up a little bit. And see how the it's so so far mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident that and now I'm gonna go in and do some like this because I want to say that there's some trees here now we're coming closer so we can begin to see some of these shapes and it's all backlit so you know there's not much color on it's just silhouetted so you can see I just I kind of indicate a little bit of the trunks can you see that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm I the reason I like to have a little bit of water and it gives me a little bit more time to paint and I won't get everything hard edged and I don't really want everything hard edged here. And I also want to have a little time to fix shapes where I say, oh, that looks weird. Um, <laughs> looks good upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so I yeah, got to kind of be a little speedy here. Put a little bit more water in here. Mm. And then my pigment on again and can you see so you can see some places it runs and a lot of places it stays hard edged right because mm -hmm. it was dry so i find it very helpful if i can get some hard and some soft edges by just kind of dabbing in just the same mm -hmm. idea as giving a little bit of a spray with a spray bottle which i can also do 
uh, and then you saw me. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I don't want to yeah. spray everywhere because then you know, these trees are going to go everywhere, and that was not my idea. And now when I'm going in, I'm on a little um, too similar patrol. I don't too similar patrol. Yes. I don't. Yes. I'm trying for randomness because that's how nature oh. is. And if everything <laughs> like the same height, it doesn't look right. Then it's a plantation. It's not na nature. <laughs> you know. Then somebody planted some Christmas trees, and I'm not painting a Christmas tree farm. That's not my goal here. Because that I always say, uh, nature is perfectly imperfect. Mm -hmm. And so are we. <laughs> and so are we. There you go. And uh, so here, just to fix that a little bit out here. And let me take a look. This one looks kind of weird and fat. So let's just. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So a little too much coffee is always good for this kind of stuff. You know, just be a little kind of <laughs> dibbly dabbly doobly. But see, that's, look that looks that. pretty, pretty oh, okay as far cool. as I'm concerned. Um, I can live with that and uh, I can go in with my little detail brush here. This is one of those little skinny brushes that I don't use very often. If there's a kind of couple of little places where I feel that I need a little bit finer detail. You can do it. I can do it and it's just so I just like to get it done in one go while it's still a little damp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I, so I always look at it and I only go in and fix if I see something that draws my eye and says, that's weird, what's that? Yeah. Um, um, other than that, you know, and see, I do not paint individual trees. Can you see how they're all connected? Yes. Because that's how it is. Yes. Very important. Yeah. So often I see students and they go, one little tree <laughs> and two, two little trees. Little yes, exactly, like the little Indians. So I always say it's like little soldiers marching, you know, and, and with the same distance between. Again, that's a Christmas tree farm, not nature. So I think this is pretty okay. I don't that's see beautiful. anything super weird. And then I could, and I will, because I can, I'm just gonna go in with one of my other little favorite tools and I do have extras you can borrow. So I do wanna go in and while it's still damp, a couple of places and just scrape out, not too much, but just Look a few that. little rocks here and there, right? Rocks. Rocks. So That's there's great. a little, it catches a little bit oh, of light. Wow. That's all, because that. I still have to remember it's not, mm. it's not like real close. Wow. So I'm gonna have something closer. But already, so now, I feel that my background here, hopefully, to you too, makes a little sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, there you go. You can see my painting now, if I left it the way it is here, uh, which I wouldn't, it would, you know, it's, it's out of balance. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Because now I have a lot of kind of heaviness over here. Mm -hmm. It's not heavy, heavy, but, you know, it's a lot of detail on darks. It's all over here now mainly over there. So it feels like it goes this way. So we have to balance it. And so I'm thinking of balancing it by um, by putting in some land here. And it's, you know, it's the foreground now. So it can be darker and it can be brighter and we want to use the same colors. So let's just get some more. Now we need to kind of amp it up a little bit. Now we still don't want very much color on because you know, when you're having the twilight and backlit, mm -hmm. it does not, um, it, it kind of eats the colors, you know? So everything is looking monochromatic. Mm -hmm. Um, so we just want to keep that in mind. And so I'm just going to doctor up my puddles a little bit. All right. So let's uh, just, uh, we're going to do it on the paper. Let's do it on the paper. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Let's see here. So I'm just going to put some color in and I'm thinking kind of like a rocky, a little bit of a rocky foreground here 
And I'm not gonna go all the way over. I've decided I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of, it just disappears down there. And I'm gonna grab my brush and let's just start with the blue. <clears throat> And I can't really see where I have the wet and where I have the dry, but that's the whole point. I love to do things like this because it um, gives me a little bit of variety in. Oh. Now I put the red in. Ooh, what's happening? <coughs> but it's not gonna be this bright because now I'm gonna, and I don't even rinse out the brush in between and put a little bit more of the blue in. So it's, it's in the foreground now, so I can have a little bit of color, not too much because it wouldn't go with this time of day. Let's put a little bit of the yellow in. And we know when we mix all three primaries, they neutralize each other, so I'm not too worried. See, most of it is purpley now, right? Because we've started with the um, red and the blue. Never mind if I get a little bit of a green tone here and there. Okay, that's kind of fun. Go in, get, I'm gonna go in and get a little bit like this while mm -hmm. I'm at it. You know, because there's weeds and stuff like that. No, grasses, they're not weeds. Weeds, <laughs> grasses. <laughs> and so I do it Real. kind of like with a flicking motion, like that, mm -hmm. a little bit here. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. pretty okay so far. Um, so that was wet, where you, where you flicked up into was wet, right? Some right places there. it was, there running. it was, uh -huh. there, there it wasn't. Okay. So and that's why I do it like this, is because I like to get a little randomness going on. Mm -hmm. And you could actually also use your rigger brush. Oh, that's that long glasses. skinny one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be a good one to use for this kind of a thing. And you can see I, I, I jump back and forth because I, I want, I'm trying to do everything I can so it doesn't get too um, regular. So I want it random, 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 random. And now I can see, can you see here, the shine has left. Mm -hmm. Here it's still quite shiny. Right. So I better get in here with my credit card. And now I'm doing some bigger shapes because I'm closer, right? So these rocks, are, they might be the same size as those, mm -hmm. but they're much closer to me so they look a lot bigger and just get some of those shapes in. And that makes for a nice foreground, wow. I think. And then I'm just gonna see if I can. I take the little pointy part here of my credit card, and then while it's still wet slash damp, I can scrape out some more of those. And can you see some of them, because it's beginning to dry, yes. it stays light. So that's yeah, what I, I want, yeah. the variety, you know, because mm -hmm. a few places of, mm. of the grasses, they're gonna catch a little bit of the light. And so where it's very wet, it's gonna run back together again. And I already have those dark ones. And again, please don't do like scrape, <laughs> scrape, <laughs> scrape. No, you can see jump around and different angles and stuff like that. And this is, once you kind of get the hang of it, it's so much fun, so it's really hard not to uh, overdo it. So <laughs> I better stop right now. I mean, so already that kind of balanced it out. Oh, wow. wow. Yes. <laughs> and it does wow. from a little bit of a distance it oh does read like rocks and weeds yes. in the foreground yes. and you can see yes. I got Absolutely. it a little bit I used the same colors only here all these places I mixed it on the palette right yeah. here yes. I let the three colors the three primary mix basically on the paper so I still get a lot of those neutrals but I do get a little bit more kind of a color play in there which makes sense because it's closer to me i can see more detail and that's what i want to do so i you know i i, um, I kind of get the sense of distance and close mm -hmm. so i'm going to do one more thing but i'm going to let you do some sort of a do foreground you have more credit cards i do i do <laughs> thank you all righty so i mean i could leave it like this but you know, first of all, I want to show you as much as possible uh, on a painting, you know, as many techniques as I can teach you uh, in one painting. And then secondly, I do feel it's a little empty. It's a little, everything is horizontal. I need 
I mean, ex except for the trees here. I need, I need another vertical element in my feel. That's my feeling. Um, so I want to do that. And before I do that, I wanted to show you because, uh, you know, not, uh, it's not always that, you know, uh, you maybe hit the right time and then, and oops, your area is too dry. So, so sometimes, you know, and then oops, it dried because, you know, to scrape out the rocks, if it's super, super wet, you scrape and the colors run back yes. right yeah. back. So that's too early. You have to, I mean, it is really one of those moments where you might have to watch paint dry. <laughs> so you kind of keep an eye on it. And when you see that the shine is beginning, beginning to leave the paper, that's when you jump, so to speak, in with your credit card. Um, and then you can scrape and then the, the colors can't run back. And also getting the shapes, like you have to use the side of your credit card. If I could have a credit card here so I can kind of have it oh, as a demo. Right oh, there's one right here. Never mind. Thank you. So don't don't use the, the corner and definitely not use this one, uh, but you use like part of the edge and it's like a squeegee motion. And I usually kind of go up and then down a little bit, but I may, and then I go somewhere else and I go in from the other side because don't do like, then it's like little potatoes. <laughs> and so that's what I mean. It takes, you know, it looks easy when I'm doing it because I've done it a lot. Uh, it, but it does like everything, it takes a little practice. So it's something, you know, t slap some color on a scrap piece of paper and then watch it and then go in and practice. So, and I'm gonna show you some other things you can also do with your credit card. I mean, I, give me a credit, I have paintings. I've painted basically only with a credit card. So it's almost like using a palette knife. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It, it's yeah, the it same. Like you can do the same thing with the palette knife, okay. as a matter of fact. And I'm guessing whether you've got the really good paper or the really cheap Makes paper. absolutely like huge difference. Paper. Again, <laughs> the good archer's paper can stand up to the abuse because, I mean, scraping into wet paper right with a credit yeah. card is kind of abusing the paper. Okay. So uh, if you have... Um, 100% cellulose uh, paper and then, you know, done a lot of wet into wet and stuff like that. Yeah, it might not really be so forgiving. So I was allowed to here show what to do if you missed the opportunity and that can happen. It can happen. Let's see if I have a better brush for that. No. So this one is fine and you can also use a brown brush. So with this much paper, uh, paint on, we can go in with a damp brush and I'm not using a scrubber brush. I'm using just a regular paint brush, but I'm scrubbing a little bit with a damp brush, not dripping wet. It's just damp. And can you see how I'm scrubbing a little bit? Mm -hmm. and then I'm taking some Kleenex and I can lift out a little bit of uh, mm. color. So I get some lighter areas and maybe one here. And some colors lift easier than others. The blue lifts really easily, the yellow and the red not so much. And here we have a mixture. Can you oh, see how I'm beginning that. to get a little bit of a texture at least, right? And so maybe in here is also a little rock. And I don't have to tell you the whole rock. I just need to get a little bit of an edge exactly like here on this one here, right? Where it's just where the light catches the, or the rock catches the light, I should say. Um, so let's step that out. Can you see how already yes. you're getting a little yeah, bit of yeah. a feel of some rocks? And then to make that feeling even stronger, once it's dry, I can go in here and mix myself a little bit of a darker color. So I need a little bit of yellow in there. So that's again, just mix all your colors together and sooner or later, you get, right, you get something <laughs> you can use. So here we go. That's a nice kind of shadowy color, right? Yep. Yeah. So once it's dry, then you can go in. Oh. And then of course you need to right away, <coughs> go in with a damp brush and just go in with the tip and just kind of lose the edge, we call this. And see there, we have kind of indicated oh, yeah. a little bit of a rock. Right. That's great. 
and we can do a little bit here and the same thing lose the edge so you only want to have a hard edge where the top of the rock is and then then the color needs to kind of disappear into the background right and we can do the same a little bit here there and again don't overdo it just tell a little bit of the story of the rock and then leave the rest to the viewer's imagination like that can you see how you can totally create rocks and uh, yeah and then here just because we have some sort of a line going on it's probably because you try to scrape with a credit card so it's a little bit of damage there so so then this we'll use that edge and we'll say there's a bigger rock in front here. And again, we'll just kind of go down like that. But can you see, <laughs> you can get yeah. something similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's great. So there's always a way. It's never, you know, impossible. Um, there's always a way to do things. So excellent. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Now I want to paint this tree and I am going to do kind of, um, you know, I'm going to, I want to do an evergreen, one of those big ones because it's in the foreground it needs to be a lot bigger than that. Just like the rocks here, a lot bigger than those, right? Um, because that's another way what we tell perspective um, is, so there's, first of all, there's, you know, less defined, paler colors further away, right? And obviously more defined more detail as we get closer and uh, another thing is of course overlapping so the uh, things in the front they overlap and block your view yes part of the view of things in the back that's also how you tell that you know things are further away or closer up and um, and then of course size so here i have some um some uh, evergreens here and then i'm going to paint one big evergreen here because now it's a lot closer it doesn't mean that these are little evergreens they probably could be the same size as this one they're just much further, further away. away yeah like going up in a plane exactly same thing where the cars all of a sudden uh, look like little uh, ants and uh, that's that's how you tell perspective or or how you you depict I should say perspective and that's how we see it so i'm just going to clean here a little bit because now i'm going to do my wild and crazy evergreen tree for you <laughs> so i could do it with just a neutral color but i'm going to show you something new go wild i'm gonna go wild <laughs> exactly why not we're here to have some fun. And I think I might have enough yellow, but just in case I don't, I'll make myself some more. So I need, you know, reinforcement here with my puddles. So now I'm gonna actually do it with dirty water so you can see what I'm doing, okay? So this is my dagger brush that I like to use for this, but you know, you can use other brushes. So I don't want it all the way out at the edge. I want it here. And so I wanna have some of that yellow still showing and so i'm i'm can you just see i'm just laying down color by just dabbing my brush down on the paper like that okay so now i have some wet some dry areas <coughs> kind of like what i did here only a different pattern because now i'm painting a tree so um let's just go in i'm going to start with the blue and I'm gonna have my tree come from down here somewhere. And it's always good not to have it too defined. The bottom, you don't wanna really see where it's coming from because you know it's covered up by rocks and dirt and uh, grasses and whatnot. And so I'm not even gonna clean out my brush now. I'm just gonna dab it into the red and I'm gonna put some red on. And I'm just dabbing in again. And you can see how I, I hit dry areas and I hit wet areas. You can see how it runs some places and other places I have a hard line. And I do this to help me get more irregular 
more random because otherwise it just gets too all predictable. But that's kind of fun. So now I dab my brush into the yellow. And put some more yellow. And we already know that, you know, when we mix all three colors, we're gonna get a neutral sooner or later, right? <laughs> and I'm gonna go back into the blue. Because I wanna darken. Put a lot of yellow up there, so let's put a lot of blue up there too, and some red. So would I do the same technique for doing my palm tree? You can do the same technique for doing your palm tree, yes. Okay. So can you see how now I have a nice dark, real dark color on my brush because it's now been dipped several times in both kinds of puddles. I want it really dark here over the mountains too. So it's beginning to look like a tree and you have to remember trees, they are fatter at the bottom and then they taper up. Mm -hmm. And our trees here in our area, they tend to kind of taper slowly most of our, the types of tree we have, be it aspens or the uh, lodgepole or the Jeffrey pines and whatever, they all have a slow taper, seems to me. And other, like, you know, oak trees are much like bigger and then they kind of go like this and yeah, okay, so. Okay. But most of our trees, they are kind of tapered like this. And now I'm just gonna go in and fix shapes a few places. And then, now I have a lot of that dark color on my brush. And now I want to go in and pull out some of those branches, oh. right? Of course it has, and they always, especially the old ones, they always have a bunch of okay. dead branches and so they kind of shorter. So you're just doing dry. Yes, you're just doing dry on it. Yeah, here it's dry, yeah. Um, and uh, I don't want that bottom there dry, to dry on me with, you know, a hard edge. Hard so I just wanted to go into the ground by just losing that edge. And what I could do is, I could take my credit card before things dry and just make sure I scrape out a few little grasses, Scrum just in case. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I have noticed by observing the trees we have here that the bottom branches, they tend to point downwards. Mm -hmm. And then as you go further up the tree, they get a little bit more straight out and when you go ev even further up, they start, when you get up like two thirds of the tree or something like that, they start moving upwards. Those are all observations. Depends on the tree species. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> but the ones I'm painting that we see here, yeah, they so. seem to, most of them have that pattern yeah. when they get older. Yeah, sugar pines will stay down. The, the whole the way, ones, yeah. The most of them, them, like the Jeffrey yeah. Pines and stuff, then so most of them have the this pattern that I have yes. observed. Yes. And um, we do have quite a lot of dead trees, but I don't know if I want to paint a dead tree here. I do want to show you also how to do the little foliage. And I think that's enough branches. Don't want to overdo it. And then right now you can't really see where the branches are coming from it all looks like they're coming straight from the sides because everything's silhouetted so i want to when it's the right time which it's not yet so i'll just carry on so i'm going to go in now and load this brush up and i took most of the water out of the brush because i want really thick pigment now and i'm going to go into my blue here and i'm going to get a little bit of yellow on and I can even put a little bit of red in because I don't want it too bright. Because again, it's backlit, so you don't see very much color. Twilight is, is kind of more colorless. So now I'm using, and you can use a round brush to do this too. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of foliage on these top ones, and I'm just doing it very gently. I'm kind of pushing my brush out. Can you see how I'm pushing? Because mm -hmm. I want to get some of these raggedy shapes mm -hmm. that looks like needles, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, don't want to just have it up there. So it would be nice to cover up a little bit here maybe. And it'll go in front and behind the tree. So make sure you don't have one of those trees where there's only the foliage on either side. Then I always say that uh, awful chainsaw guy was there mm -hmm. and he <laughs> sawed off all the branches that were 
on the front and on the back, and we don't want him around. <laughs> we don't like him. So can you see how I'm being very careful and I'm pushing and I, all I'm interested in is do my edges look like evergreens? And I think they look pretty, pretty darn well like evergreens here. This takes also a little practice. And maybe I want to go down one more layer because, and so this is folks, here is the perfect opportunity to cover up some little sins we have certain places that we maybe didn't turn out quite the way we wanted them. And I'm just gonna go down here and then I'm gonna call it quits. And also a little narrow up here and then they get a little wider, a little wider, a little wider. These things are important. And I think I should probably leave it before I do something I regret. Oh, nice job. Wow. Good. So that's an evergreen, but I am not done yet because I have one that more little awesome. trick up mm -hmm. my sleeve. I could totally leave it like that. And mm -hmm. some trunks would, and I like that I don't have, I'm, I'm happy that I don't have it too perfect there and I could go in and fix it, but they're not. Yeah. They're ragged, you know, they're, 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 they spark. have texture, they spark. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the woodpecker was by and <laughs> other critters were by. So, um, Another thing that I like to do on a lot of my evergreens is I use, now I use the rounded part of my credit card. And before, can you see how the shine is leaving the paper? Mm -hmm. That's yes. the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like to go in and scrape Ooh. in some highlights because they also have this texture oh, yeah. and some of them, yes. they catch the light. Very good. I love when that happens. Yeah. You know, I go up, out on hikes and I look and on walks and stuff and out in my garden and I look and I observe and I try to remember what I see. And I see those patterns in the bark. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then I could go in and scrape out a little bit so that you can see that that branch comes from the mm -hmm. center front, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So that they're not all like from, yeah, from the, the side. Yeah, That's that important. Mm -hmm. Good job. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so, but some of them will come from the other side. And now I can go in if I feel I could use another branch or anything, you know, I could go in here and maybe do a couple more. And sometimes you need to put some little side branches in here so that it doesn't look like that foliage is floating and free, free floating in air. So I like to put some little uh, pieces of branches in these little sky holes and make sure you have some sky holes like that. I call them sky holes because it's gotta be places for the birds to fly through. <laughs> right? Right. Yes. So anyway, so you, you get the picture and this all takes a little time and a little practice, but it's super effective and you can use it for so, so many uh, things. And you, I mean, it's just landscape painting 101. And you know, and wow. see how it's nice, the tree's just coming mm -hmm. naturally out of the ground. Mm -hmm. It's not like stuck on. Never wanna have a hard straight line at the bottom of a tree or a rock, because then it looks like you stuck it on. So there you have it. And then I feel, do I feel, what do I feel? I feel my painting is pretty balanced now. And here's my focal area, which is what I wanted. This most detailed, darkest darks against the lightest light. Mm -hmm. So that's a landscape. Yay. Yay.